I gave you the ability. I've told you to bind. I've told you to loose. I've told you to resist. Now with you binding, with you loosing, and you resisting, what God says, what you've got to recognize, is my grace is sufficient. You don't need your strength. You don't need your ability. You don't need your power. My grace will get this job, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. Today, we're going to have a look at an amazing subject, and that's the amazing grace of God. We serve a God of great grace. We serve a God of bountiful grace. He is our bountiful God of grace. And I have seen over time how sometimes grace can be misunderstood, misapplied, misused, and yet there is so much grace truth in the grace of God. He is grace. And if we can get a hold of the revelation of what grace is, who grace is, and how grace works in our lives, and how you can access grace, it's going to take you to a whole nother level, an exciting life with Jesus. You're going to love the subject. I'll see you afterward. Come with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 7. Paul writes, says, Lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace, you want to say grace? My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, this portion of Scripture is one of the most misunderstood portions of Scripture in Christianity today. Now, there are a number of different places where people do. There's a lot of things we agree on as Christians. And, you know, you believe Jesus died for your sins, rose from the dead, today's in heaven. Yes, amen. But there's certain areas where people, because of dead tradition and religious tradition and thoughts of men, have distorted Scripture. And the enemies used it to keep you from stepping into the fullness of grace where you can boldly, confidently walk in. And this is one of the areas that the enemy has used because when you read this without a revelation of what grace is, it sounds like Paul had a really horrible life. It sounds like he was always sick, always struggling, always battling, and he was complaining to God and saying, God, please take this away from me. And then I've heard preachers say, and then God answered and said, no. Now, first of all, I don't see any no in there. That's already an insertion. It sounds like God said, no, my grace is what, it's enough for you. you d don't worry about everything else. I'm not going to stop this problem for you. You have to suffer and struggle as a Christian. Just know that I'm with you. That's what it sounds like. And then Paul's conclusion is, in that case, I'm going to celebrate that I'm weak. Now, 
with that sound, if, 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 if that's all I preach to you, you know I'm going somewhere else already. So you, but, it, but if I preach that way, can you see how that could be interpreted there? And that's what the enemies relied on. So when people struggling and battling, they eventually go, oh, well, well, that's just God told Paul. He never ever got out of it. And the thing was that, you know, Paul was, he had all these revelations. Because that's what he was saying. He got all these revelations. And to stop Paul from becoming proud and puffed up, God had to keep him humble somehow. And so he allowed these things to happen so that Paul never got proud. And so keep him humble under all these problems. And, and you've probably heard people say that sometimes God will make somebody poor just to teach them humility. And it's based on what, how this scripture was incorrectly interpreted. So how many of you want to hear the truth? And you look at it from the perspective of scripture. Remember, you don't look at one scripture, just lift it off and there's your result. No, you have to, it has to fit in with the rest of the word of God. All the other scriptures need to confirm what God is saying. What is Paul saying? Okay, let's have a look here. First of all, lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations. What's he saying? I've got so much revelation. Now you understand, Paul was seeing into. By the time he got saved, they didn't even have the book of Acts yet. It was only the old covenant. He wrote Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. So the, the knowledge of how to hear God's voice, the knowledge of how faith works, hearing and then speaking, all of that, that was all revelation that Paul was getting. And he was writing all these things down. God was giving him access to the new covenant. Jesus gave birth to the new covenant. Most of the disciples came out of the old covenant and they were preaching Christ Paul started teaching the ways of the kingdom. And so he had all this profound wisdom coming out. And the Bible says here that in case he was exalted, then what happened was this messenger of Satan was given to buffet him, lest he becomes exalted above measure. In other words, to keep him down, just before you get all big-headed about all this revelation, this problem, this thorn in the flesh, will keep you in your place. Now, keep your marker here. Don't go in. You're coming right back. We're going to study it. Come with me to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Look at verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Everybody say humility. For God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so we don't need a devil to humiliate you the instruction is humble yourself you don't need to ask for a thorn of flesh to humble you it's your decision. God resists the proud, but it doesn't say he will stop the proud. He says he resists the proud. He doesn't say he will make you humble. Humble yourself. Lift your hand and say, God's telling me to humble myself. Now, why would I humble myself? That God may exalt me in due time. So God wants you to be exalted. Amen. Lift your hand and say, God wants me to be exalted in due time. Now what does he mean by due time? You understand when you first got saved, 
if God took the Allen bag who just got saved and put him here now, you realize just being in this position with not really knowing anything, you can become proud in that moment. God knows I have to develop character. I need to learn the Word of God. Don't lay hands on anyone suddenly. How do you understand? You have to grow and expand in wisdom and character. There's a lot of things that are going to have to be developed till God says, now I can use you in this position. Then He'll give you a promotion. Then He'll work with you and He'll promote you again. And He'll work with you. But He wants to get you to a place where you're walking as a son of God. How do you understand when we talk about humility, our understanding of humility is incorrect. Some people say, Pastor, and you really going to meet this person. They're so humble. I always like to ask the person, what do you mean by that? They say, well, he's such a quiet, gentle person. You know, totally doesn't, doesn't try and get in. The fa- that's not true humility. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, a, you know, that's one type of personality. I also like people that are really friendly and gentle and open. I, I enjoy that type of personality. But that's not humility. What is humility? He tells us here, it is humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. In other words, it's not me, mine, and I. It's all Him. It's His grace. His anointing. That's humility. And then as that, how do you do that? By casting all your care upon Him. For He cares for you. I don't need to try to solve this. That becomes me. I can fix this. That's pride. No, I cast it onto Him. Now when I learn that, when I learn to cast it onto Him, it's His church. He's building it. He's the one doing the work. He's the only one that can get people saved. He's the only one that can heal people. He's the only one that can provide. When I'm in that place, God says, now I can use you. How many of you know, for me to preach the word, it's better for me at my, the grace that's in my life. How many of you know, I'm more effective preaching to millions than I am just to one person. If I just had one person just humble, I don't have much to say. I don't know how to, you know, I just got to be gentle and quiet. I don't need fame. I don't, I don't need, no, no, please don't, no, no. I don't, put the cameras off, no, no. I'm just being humble now. I'll only reach a small amount of people. God needs me. He wanted me. I didn't decide to go on television. He called me. I didn't go on television to be famous. I don't care if no one ever knows who Alan Bag is, because it's not about Alan Bag. It's about Jesus Christ. It's His name, His church, His glory, His anointing. And when you're in that place, God says, "Now I can put you on the platform so that you can teach millions of people, and it won't go to your head." So now what happens? He exalts me in due time. So the point I'm making is. God does want you to be more effective to more people than you are today. So God wants to exalt you when you're ready. Can you see that from the scripture? That is the target. So God does want to exalt. Now, go back to Corinthians. Lest I should be exalted. Oh, hang on. Who's the only one that would have a problem with you being exalted? Not God. God's not the one trying to stop Paul. Who's trying to stop him? Satan. Satan. And in fact, you can see it in that scripture. It says a messenger of Satan was sent. Not a messenger of God. Now, please, you've got to renew your mind to the fact that God is not using the devil as his messenger. He's got enough angels. And Jesus died to save you, to deliver you out of sickness and disease, out of poverty and lack, to deliver you out of anything that the curse has for you. So why would God hold the devil like some evil person with a rot viler on the end of a, of, a, of a leash that if his children get out of line, get him. No, it's a messenger of, so who sent the messenger? 
Satan. You're getting this. This was not God trying to keep him down. It was the devil. Family, when attacks come against you in your life, it is not God. It is Satan. Now notice he calls it a thorn in the flesh. A thorn in the flesh. Some people have interpreted that as disease. No, if you gain, if you use, let the scriptures speak. Just write these verses down. I won't go read them all. Judges chapter 2 verse 3. Numbers chapter 33 verse 55. And Joshua chapter 23 verse 13. Even God called the enemies of Israel a thorn in the side. So any enemy coming against you, it was a figure of speech saying it's like a thorn in the side. The fact that they're attacking you, how many of you have ever had a thorn, an actual thorn go in and then break off and that thing irritates you and you can't get it out and it begins to hurt and begins to swell. So when you've got this constant barrage of enemies, you're trying to get rid of it, but it's there all the time. So thorn in the flesh is terminology Paul's used to. That when an enemy keeps attacking and you can't stop the enemy, it becomes a thorn in the side. There's three references to that in the Old Testament. Now, so the messenger of Satan came to buffet him. To buffet. What's buffet? Notice it didn't say, notice it wasn't pride. that Because the Bible says before pride comes a fall. Buffet is when you hit and you hit. How many of you ever been to the harbor and you see a boat moored to the side and the waves are hitting and that boat hits boom, boom, boom. That's buffet all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. How many of you ever had problems in your life where it hits you and you say, that's enough now, hits you again, that's enough. And you try and bind and it comes again and you, start, and you just keep, it's over and over. And you say, I, I cannot put up with one more day of this. That's that buffet, buffet, buffet. What's he trying to do? wear you down he's trying to wear you down why because he doesn't want you to get to where God's called you to be so he's going to try and wear you down now concerning this thing I pleaded with the Lord how often three times that it might depart from me who did he talk to God he said God please take this thing away what does God say? My grace is sufficient for you. Notice he didn't say no. He didn't say no. He says you've got something to deal with this. Because again, if you go do the cross references, the Bible says you submit to God, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Amen. Didn't Jesus say whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven? Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. So God's not the, he won't deal with the devil for you. you the one that has to deal with it. You getting this? So when the enemy comes, you're going to say, God, please take him away. He says, I gave you authority. I gave you the ability. I told you to bind. I told you to loose. I told you to resist. Now with you binding, with you loosing, and you resisting, what God says, what you've got to recognize is my grace. Is sufficient you don't need your strength you don't need your ability you don't need your power my grace will get this job for my strength is made perfect in your weakness now what did we read earlier on tonight where the Bible talks about our weaknesses in Hebrews 4 verse 16 that in your weakness you come to the throne of grace why to obtain grace for help in that need so God is saying when you are weak that's when you step into grace because oh, you gotta get a hold of this doesn't matter how weak you get my grace doesn't have a bottom to it that if you get so weak you're going to miss me. No. At your weakest, you're going to find my grace is enough. My grace is sufficient for you because my strength is made perfect 
in your weakness. So if you, even though you're weak, my grace will show up as strength. Therefore, Paul says, gladly will I rather boast in my infirmities. Now that word boast is in the Strong's Concordance number 2744. He wasn't bragging that he'd rather stay weak. The word boast, if you translate it, in fact, if you look at the King James, the original version, it says, I will glory in my infirmities. Everybody say glory. glory. Another word is rejoice. I will rejoice in my infirmities. He's not rejoicing that he's sick. He's not rejoicing that he's weak. He's rejoicing where? Therefore will I rather glory in, not because. So when I'm in my weakness, I will still glory. Now I gladly, when I learnt grace. See, three times I thought I had to do this. Oh God, can't you help me? God, please show me. When God revealed grace to me, I went, then in my weakness, I can begin to praise. In my weakness, I begin praising. Why? So that the power of Christ can come and rest upon me. I'm not doing this because when you begin to praise God, what happens? He's enthroned upon the praises of His people. When you rejoice, the power of God shows up. When you praise, that's when you see the power of God begin to move. When you say, thank you, I receive it, that's when it shows up. Join us this Christmas at the Bay Christian Family Church for an amazing time of celebrating our Savior Jesus. We will be celebrating Jesus with all our family through times of worship, song and dance. This is always such a special time of the year as we celebrate Jesus together with family and friends. We will also be having a special Christmas Eve service at the Bay. On this evening, we will once again be celebrating our Lord Jesus. And Alan Bagg will be sharing a special message for this season. Entrance will be free, but we encourage you to come early so you don't miss out. For any info, please contact us or visit us online. Join us at the Bay Christian Family Church as we see the New Year in in the powerful presence of our God. Three, two, one. Happy New Year! Every year, the Lord has faithfully shared a prophetic word for the year that lies ahead. And on this New Year's Eve, Alan Bagg will once again be encouraging and sharing God's amazing plans for us for the year ahead. So don't miss out on our New Year's Eve service taking place at 10 p.m. Entrance will be free and you are more than welcome to bring friends and family and see this New Year in in the powerful presence of our God. For any information, please contact us at allenbagministries.org. As born-again children of God, we have been made the righteousness of God and by faith, we have access to God's grace. Whatever you're doing, whatever your call is, whatever vision is in your heart, grace enables you to fulfill that. In this life-changing series, Alan Bagg will teach you the relationship between righteousness and God's grace. You're going to see God in a whole new light and it's going to really make your walk with Him even more powerful. Learn to triumph over any obstacle in your life. When you see grace the way God intended for you to see it and you walk in it, you're going to see yourself reigning in life. Understanding and operating in the fullness of God's grace has the potential to make us unstoppable. So get the series and walk in the fullness of God's grace. Contact Allen Bank Ministries at any of these details. Isn't it amazing how far technology has come? The messages are now available on this thumbstick. That's a MP3. That means you take this little thing and plug it in your computer Download all the messages, get them onto your phone, and you can have them wherever you want to. Our bountiful God of grace. Of course, you can still get them on CDs if you'd like to do that. And this is a message that has so transformed 
our congregation, when people have revelation of who God is and how the devil has tried to use your sin to keep you from accessing the fullness of God and yet God has cleared you of that sin, He's forgiven you and freed you from it and now given you full access to His throne of grace. When you understand that and walk in the fullness of His grace, your life will go to a whole new level. I want to encourage you, get a hold of this message, our bountiful God of grace. Listen to it again and again and again and renew your mind to the fact that you too have already seated in grace. Amen. Well, the most exciting thing about grace was eternal life. It still is. And if you've not yet given your life to Jesus, grace says all you have to do is believe. Sometimes we feel like we've got to do this and do that till we're good enough to become Christian. No, if you've committed any sin, the Bible says you confess it. God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of that unrighteousness. And if you believe with your heart Jesus is raised from the dead, confess with your mouth that He's Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So let's do that right now. Let's pray together. Right there, while you're watching, say this out loud. Dear Jesus, thank you. You saved me. You died on that cross to pay for my sin. And then you rose from the dead. And I believe you are alive. Today I call you my Lord, my Savior. I'm born again, a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If you've just prayed that prayer, you are now born again. I have a free gift for you. This is my decision card. I'll explain to you what's happened. There's also guidelines now that you're Christian. And then the study program will lead you through the Bible. You just read every day what it tells you to read. And within one year, 365 days, you'll read your Bible from cover to cover. And then my Christian passport out of this world of failure into his kingdom of victory. Now, I want to show that. That's a CD. And I'm going to bless you with it. Just write to me at the address over there or call us on that phone number. When we've got your details, we'll send that to you. We'll also pay the postage. It's free of charge, free gift, sowing a seed into your life. Welcome to the family. Well, that's all we got time for today. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series. Choose life.